Namaste everyone. Good morning. Welcome to your practice. This is Stephen from YogaWorks and I'm really happy to see you here for an hour of Vinyasa flow which we have together. What an incredible luxury to be able to afford ourselves this little bit of time, a little bit of um, focus on ourselves to walk out feeling a bit better after just one hour of time or even if you have less time then uh, do whatever you can. And today I've chosen as a theme simple but not easy. Now there's an important uh, distinction between simple and easy. Simple just means the absence of difficulty which might be nice sometimes, you know, sitting on the couch and watching Netflix and uh, all these things, but the, the growth potential is very, very limited. It's practically non-existent with, with uh, easy things. Now, um, did I say simple or easy? Easy is the absence of difficulty, of course. Simple means the absence of complexity. Now, this is a hard thing to make something that's complex more simple in your understanding. Simple just means you can do a couple of simple poses really well. It doesn't mean that they are easy. For example, some really simple yoga poses like, a, say, a plank. I want to know today, I don't want to know, can you put your leg behind your head? I want to know how hard or how well can you work in plank, for example. So I'm going to give you a whole selection of really simple yoga poses, super straightforward. You've done all of them before, I'm really sure. But we're going to see if we can work a tiny bit harder in that simple yoga pose, in that simple place, which is uncomplicated. I've also chosen this because things are complex enough as they are, uh, as they already are at the moment out there, probably in your, in your financial life, in your work life, in your home life, in your family life. There's a lot of stuff going on. So at least if we can keep our yoga practice nice and simple, then that is at least an hour of um, break from all this complexity that exists out there. It's also going to help you if you want to do some more yoga at home to just keep things simple and just do a good plank, a good down dog, a good warrior two and that's going to take you a whole lot further than practicing some of the fancy poses that you may or may not be able to do. Right, let's, uh, I'm going to move back to the mat and you can take a comfortable seat wherever you are and then let's start in the most simple place puzzle, which is just sitting down quietly. That's it. Sit however you want, cross-legged or with your legs out in front or even leaning against the wall, doesn't matter. Just sit. Rest your hands, close your eyes and rest here for a moment. And straight away, can you drop a whole lot of stuff, stuff that happened before, stuff that you worried about that hasn't happened yet in the future. Just drop all of that and just sit here. Sit here with your breath, with sensations in your body. And yes, with your busy mind, that's fine. It's going to be, it's going to be busy. That's its job. And straight away, can you also tune into the, the feeling of presence behind all the, the things that you hear, the things that you think, the things that you feel. There's a sense of an observer being present here. Can you tune into that presence? And take a few slower breaths. In fact, let's take three deeper breaths together. I'll count them with you. Exhale all the breath out for a moment. Empty completely. And then inhale for two. Three, four, pause for a moment, hold at the top. Slow exhale through the nose, two, three, four. A little pause at the bottom, just hold here. And then inhale again through your nose, two, three, four. Little pause, stay with it, relax as you hold the breath. Exhale, two, three, Four. Again, hold the breath out and relax in this pause. Last one. Inhale. Two. Three. Four. Hold for a moment. And exhale. Two. Three. Four. Let the breath return to normal. Just see what an enormous difference this makes. Three slower 
more present breaths and this is how you feel so just imagine after a whole hour of practicing nice you can blink your eyes open let's do some simple core work i think there's three really simple core exercises that that we should do every day and i'm going to walk you through all three of them so come onto hands and knees and then come into a neutral spine so we're not rounding like cat pose we're not hollowing like uh, cow pose we're just um, as as neutral as you can and then bring your right foot back you can place it on the mat for now and then just touch your rib cage with your hand at three probably your left and then lift your right leg a little bit we don't want to lift it high because then we're going to lose the the spinal alignment so just have it maximum at hip height or preferably a little bit lower actually nice keep this keep your core really intact now reach the left arm forward and then stretch it out kick your right heel back reach your left fingertips forward nice and i will move with the breath and the main thing is not the movement of arms and legs but it's going to be to keep your core as stable as possible so start to tap left hand to right knee and reach out again keep your core really steady squeeze around the belly and the lower back and the waist tap again and reach out we'll do three more tap keep your core really steady and reach only the arm and the leg move nothing else no spinal movement no tilting of the pelvis and that's five set it down and see how quickly that wakes up all the muscles around the back line your glutes your hamstrings the spinal muscles that's the whole point of this warm up step the left foot back with your right hand just touch the ribcage just to see that nothing shifts out of place as you lift the left foot a little bit off the mat again don't go as high as possible go a little bit off the mat keeping your core steady that's our focus here really simple but you'll notice simple doesn't mean easy that's what we're here to practice reach your right arm forward when you're ready squeeze around the belly and the lower back and the waist and i will move right hand taps left knee and reach forward spine super strong tap that's two and reach three more keep your core stable resist any movement there three four and one more the best one yet and reach out without arching your back nice set it down that's number one number two place your left elbow on the mat place right foot in front of the left come into simple forearm plank maybe right hand can go to right hip or you can stretch that arm up i like to make a fist it's like yeah this is it i'm gonna do this and i like to hold for at least 20 maybe 30 seconds on either side what you can also do is squeeze the inner thighs together here the placement of your feet like this will help with this last three two one yeah we did it come down swiftly change to the other side you're on your right elbow left foot in front of the right and then without further ado come into your forearm blank yes please i'm pushing down with the right elbow and with the feet i'm squeezing inner thighs together almost like you have a block in between the thighs and then fist up power to you and to me as you lift the hips as best as you can and just tremble with me for 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 lower down onto your belly that was uh, number two so we've got the back we've got the sides now we need the front our abdomen and one of the best poses i know is the half boat so lie down your back this is not it though don't don't start to relax completely here and then just curl your shoulders and your chest a little bit up chin to chest and hover your feet 
a little bit off the mat, reach your fingertips towards your toes. They say you should never hold this pose for more than 10 minutes at a time. So if you're doing this in your home practice, set your timer, maximum 10 minutes, but we'll do a little bit less today because there's a lot that we want to go through. Okay, I'm pressing the lower back down into the mat. All the rest is lifting up joyfully. The other choice, if you don't choose joyfully, is miserably. You're lifting up miserably. I wouldn't recommend that. Right, so here we are. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Maybe lift up to full boat just for fun. Nice. Come onto hands and knees again. So we've done some good core warm-up with those three exercises. You should do them every day if you can. And then here, just keep your spine steady again. Lift the right knee a little bit off the mat. And we'll do a hip circle. Sometimes we do this much slower and much more precisely. But we're keeping things simple today. So just move your hip in all directions. And you'll see where... This space where your hip is happy to go. And you'll probably find some sticky point where your hip is not happy to go. So just this point of this is just to warm up, change direction of your circle. So we're going to the elbow first and then circling out. Or if you start on the other side and just swap. One more. Nice, change around. You can just change legs, I'm just turning so you can see better. Left leg, lift it up, out, and forward, circle around. You'll probably notice your shoulders want to move, your spine, your lower back will definitely want to get in on this action, but try to minimize that as best as you can. And even though this is really simple, this is quite intense, there's a lot going on, there's a strong, big muscle groups around the hips, change direction. And it takes a lot of effort to mobilize these areas. And one more circle. Good. Downward facing dog. Step back and notice. Quite an active warm up. Three core exercises and some hip circles. Incredibly simple. I would be struggling to simplify that even more, but incredibly effective in a very short period of time. We've warmed up, our core feels rock steady, and the hips feel nice and open. We'll get into a bit of shoulders as well just now. So we'll do one more little warm up before we start to move a little bit more in our sun salutations. Step your right foot forward. Keep the left hand down inside your right foot. And then a couple of times, actually keep the right hand down for now as well. And then a couple of times, just move side to side. You can sort of shift the hip side to side or shift your whole body forward and back or to the left, to the right. It doesn't really matter. matter. Just noodle around and just see what you got. How, does, how are the hips feeling today? How's the right one and the left one? They don't necessarily feel the same, probably not at all. Nice, and then stop for a moment, keep left hand down, we'll just move that shoulder. So just do a couple of shoulder circles, I'm reaching the right hand forward, forward, forward. Up, 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 back, 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 and then down. Circle. Circle, it's also good way to keep your hips in this lunge for a little bit longer while working on some shoulder movements. Now step back, downward facing dog. See, for all these movements we're doing today, you don't need a yoga teacher. You just need to get on your mat and start to move around a little bit. Incredibly simple, just a squat, a lunge, um, shoulder, hip circle, and some, a little bit of core work. Step your left foot forward. Keep the fingertips down and get in there, shifting side to side, maybe forward and back. Maybe a little twist. Just see what feels good. 
what is the story on this side and there's a good chance a whole different story than on the first side that's quite normal hold that keep the right hand down now reach the left hand forward forward all the way up stretch back and go down with your gaze you can follow the movement of your hand and in the meantime you're holding that lunge in any way you can a couple of circles just see how's that left shoulder feeling and then place the left hand down and step back down dog so i will combine these two movements in a mini little flow step right foot forward reach the left uh, the right hand forward up back circle back down dog step your left foot forward inhale exhale step back step right foot forward inhale as you exhale arm comes down step back left foot forward inhale exhale right foot forward inhale exhale left foot forward inhale exhale downward facing dog hold for a moment and then lower your knees child's pose rest your body down on this safe space on your yoga mat <clears throat> this is a place where you can keep coming back to experiment to try out different things to give your body and mind exactly what it needs today which may not be what it needs tomorrow or when you're 10 years older later on <clears throat> good let's come back to down dog and walk your feet forward to the front take your time bend your knees a good amount hang down for a moment just let everything just relax down with gravity good to have a little bend in the knees you might even feel your torso is resting on the thighs and your head is hanging down like this big coconut at the end of your spine just tractioning the spine a little bit longer soften the breath and then on the next inhale start to roll up really slow keep the knees bent the spinal roll incredibly beneficial for the mechanics of your spine good roll the shoulders back a couple of times when you get to the top and then stand tall this is mountain pose feet are pressing down head is lifting up into the sky your abdomen and your glutes are a little bit engaged to sort of hold your body from the back and from the front and then let's keep it simple half sun salutation inhale lift the arms up exhale fold forward and hang down you can always bend your knees inhale flat back place your hands to the shins stretch the chest forward exhale rebend and fold inhale go all the way up reach through the fingertips exhale hands back to the heart nice and simple just lose yourself in these movements inhale arms up exhale fold forward soften the knees inhale flat back less thinking more doing and just experiencing exhale fold forward inhale rise arms can go forward or out it doesn't matter exhale hands to heart we'll do two more of these you can close your eyes and just follow the breath it's really simple inhale enjoy the absence of complexity exhale fold forward inhale flat back exhale forward fold again inhale rise arms high 
Exhale, hands to heart. One more round of just count the breaths this time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, enjoy the simplicity. Exhale, follow the breath. Inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Keep the eyes closed, take a slow breath in. Take a slow breath out. Let's add some step backs in our sun salutations. Keep it simple, inhale, lift the arms. Exhale to fold forward. We start with the same as we did before. Inhale, flat back, chest goes forward. Exhale, the right foot, step it back. Stay on the fingertips, press both feet down, and as you resist the mat away, lift the belly a little bit off the left thigh. Lengthen the head forward and up. Exhale, just to down dog. Can't get more simple, we did mountain pose, we step back into a lunge, and we ended up in down dog. Now we'll just reverse it. Inhale here. Exhale, the right foot forward. I like when the right foot is back, I like to step right foot forward first, but it's not necessary. You could also swap it around. A moment to press the floor away in your lunge and exhale, step forward and relax, forward fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, second side. Exhale, follow the breath down, Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, hands down, the left foot back this time. We're in our lunge again, both feet pressed down, fingertips pressed down. And there's a little bit of abdominal activity to lift the belly off the thigh. Exhale, just to down dog, step back. Inhale and down dog, we're moving on. Exhale, left foot forward, keep the right knee up. Stay in the lunge for another breath. And exhale, step forward, let it all go in your forward fold. Inhale, takes you up again. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, the arms float up with the breath. Exhale, side the breath out if you like, hang the head down. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, the right foot steps back. This time, lower your right knee down. Inhale, lift the arms, low lunge pose. Exhale, hands down. Step into plank. Inhale in plank. Exhale, lower slow onto your belly. And come into sphinx pose. Hands can clasp together or however you'd like to place them here. Nice. And we're going to keep the knees down, but just a few times. We'll curl chin to chest, lift up the chest, belly, and the hips. Round your back, especially the lower back if you can, and then set it back down. 20 more. No, two more. Lift, 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 lift. Round your back, round the lower back, tuck tailbone under, and... Set it down. Only one more, you got it. Chin to chest. Round and lift. Slowly down. Downward facing dog, make your way back. You can push up to plank. Or a little bit easier is move your hips to your heels. So through child's pose, back to down dog, you choose. Inhale here. Exhale, step right foot forward, left knee down. Inhale, low lunge pose, lift the chest proudly. Exhale, step forward, fold at the top. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, hands to heart. I'm spending some time in the sun salutations, one of the simplest ways to warm up all parts of the body in yoga. Inhale, lift the arms, lift the heart. Exhale, takes you down. Inhale, it's flat back. Exhale, step left foot back, lower your knee. Inhale, move in a way that feels soothing, that feels amazing, that feels 
Like it's making you more powerful and confident. Inhale, plank, step back. Exhale, shift a bit forward, lower down, slow. Sphinx pose, we're back. Don't let your mind get in the way. I can't do this and my core doesn't exist. And my pose doesn't look like somebody else's. Don't waste any time with those kind of thoughts. We're keeping the knees down again, chin to chest. Round the hollow, the front body, round the back body. And set it down. Two more. Chin to chest, look back. Lift the hips and round your lower back, tuck tailbone under. Lower down. One more. Round and lift. Push your elbows down. And let it go. Nice. Hands a bit back from the shoulders. Push up to the plank. Or move through child's pose into your down dog. Inhale and down dog. Invite the breath again. Exhale, step left foot forward, right knee down. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, step forward and relax. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a little breather, close your eyes. Feel the thumbs touching your chest. Feel the heartbeat below the ribcage. Feel the expansion and relaxation of the lungs. Feel the energy throbbing in each part of your body. Let's do one more round, sun salutations. We'll change it up a bit. Inhale, lift the arms. Little back bend if you feel like it. Exhale, fold forward and relax. Maybe you start to keep knees uh, straight or you can keep them bent. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, right foot back. This time, keep your knee up if you can for high lunge. Doesn't matter if you need to bend that back knee a little bit, it's okay. Lower your hands. Inhale, step back to plank. Shift forward, move through Chaturanga, bend your elbows and slowly lower down. Locust pose. One of the simplest poses I know to strengthen the back. Lift the head, chest, arms and legs. Three, two, one. Push up. Down dog or child's pose to down dog. Inhale here. Exhale, step right foot forward. Keep the left knee up if you can. Lift the arms, high lunge. Split the legs apart. Exhale, step forward and fold, inhale to rise, exhale hands to heart, half around left and then we'll change it up, inhale, exhale fold forward, hopefully you're starting to warm up, I'm getting nice and sweaty on this hot summer's day, inhale, halfway left, exhale left back, high lunge, Press the feet down, lift the arms, the torso up. Exhale is for plank pose. Strong core, strong legs. Lean forward, bend the elbows, slow, slow. And all the way down. Locust pose again, lift everything up. Doesn't get any simpler than this pose. Exhale, push up if you want or move back to child's down dog, inhale. Exhale, left foot forward, lift the arms on the inhale again. Exhale, hands down, forward fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Again, close your eyes. Take a little moment to feel your aliveness. This is eventually what our yoga practice is re reminding us of. It's our aliveness and that aliveness of everything and everyone around us. And you feel that subtle connection. Even just the idea we're practicing with a group of yogis right now online, we might be spread out 
in all different locations. But our goal is the same. Slow breath in, slow breath out. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, fold forward. Nice inhale, flat back, hands to shins. Feel the lower back strengthen. Exhale, just step back to downward facing dog. And then step your right foot forward and turn both toes towards the right side of your mat. So we're on the left hand, toes are turned to the right and the hips are hanging down. So you just want to play with a simple outer hip opener, but it's also a version of side plank so we can introduce a little bit of strength work like this, where we lift the hips up and we lower down. Lift the hips up and lower down. Every time you lift up, you're pushing your feet down to lift the whole body up. Nice. One more. Lift, lift, lift. Option, stay here. Or option, step right foot on top of the left. So this is mountain pose, but just we've fallen onto our side. This is how yogis fall on their side. They just catch themselves and stay cool. Like this. Three, two, one. And release downward facing dog. If you need chance pose, then I'm not blaming you. This is quite strong shoulder work. Nice. Second side. Left foot step forward. Keep right hand down. Turn the toes to the left side. You can wiggle your feet a little bit apart or however you need to, to get this done. I find a really nice hip stretch in the outer hips. Both for the top hip and especially this lower hip actually. As well as the bottom side of the waist and the rib cage. Really nice pose, super simple to hang out a little bit. But of course, we've got some simple but not easy work to do. <laughs> you remember the lifts, hand to top hip or wherever it goes, lift up. One, bring five, two, three, lift a little bit higher, four, maybe stretch your arm up. And last on five, stay here, or sneak the left foot on top of the right, push the mat away, maybe smile for extra advanced version of the side plank. Three, two, one, down dog. Got two more breaths. One more breath. Nice. Inhale, shift forward into plank. Another incredibly simple pose, but super effective. Try to stack your shoulders straight on top of the wrists. And then all we're going to do is lift the left foot a little bit. Squeeze into the midline. Press everything together around your core and come up onto your right fingertips. This is optional, you can stop at any time or maybe some of you reach the right arm forward. Three, two, and one. Thank goodness, downward facing dog. You're starting to see why down dog could be called a resting pose by some teachers or in some classes. It all depends what you did before, isn't it? All right, we do a crazy plank thing on the second side. Shift forward to plank, lift the right foot a little bit. Nice. Squeeze into your core, come up onto left fingertips. Maybe that's it. Or left hand reaches forward. Three, two, one, and back to down dog. Ooh, la, la. Couple of breaths here. There's always child's pose if you need to take some weight off your arms. And then step the right foot forward. Turn the left heel down. Slowly come up to warrior two. 
have a good bend in your front knee and then just make it interesting for the inner thigh. So there's a good stretch here, but nothing that um, feels too much. A couple of breaths and then stretch your arms out and bring the right elbow under the left. Lift elbow slightly, squeeze your forearms together. Don't forget the legs. And then round your upper back. It's probably round already. But can you feel the stretch there in between the shoulder blades as they're sliding apart when you press the elbows together? Slowly release the arms out. Normal warrior two. And then take your back hand, reach it around the lower back. Maybe with the other hand, you could try to find this hand, pull it through a little bit more. And then for some, you might be able to find this inner hip crease here. For other people, this is just not going to work. So keep it simple and just place your hand behind your lower back or even tuck it into the back of your pants. That's all good. And then lower right elbow to your right thigh. Nice. Good bend in the front knee. Roll the top shoulder back. The bind is going to help you to achieve that a little bit better and to remind you of that openness in the front of the shoulder. Now, so we're going to keep the bind in the top hand, straighten the front leg, lean forward and place the right hand anywhere. Usually for me it feels good somewhere on that shin. For others it might be higher and some might be happy with the hand on the floor. If you had a fat book or a yoga block or something nearby, you can also place this under this right hand here to have a neat little support. Doesn't matter where you are, but we're pulling the legs together. Another really simple pose. This is a staple of most vinyasa yoga classes, the triangle pose. And we're just seeing if we can hold a little bit longer and, and maybe work a little bit harder in the pose by pulling the legs together, by lengthening the chest forward, and by not compressing this bottom side here too much. It tends to scrunch up, but see if you can lengthen the bottom side forward as well. Good, re-bend your front knee, and then come in reverse warrior still with the half bind if you've still got it. So reach back, bend the front knee, and lean back to the right arm. Slowly come out. Keep the half bind for now. And come into half moon pose. Step, no, not step, step onto your right foot and place the right hand down. Maybe that block is handy here. And lift the left foot up. Now you can release that half bind, leave, reach the left arm up. Stretch away to your legs. Simple pose, but anything but easy, right? If you want to play a little bit, you can hold the left foot in your left hand, kick it back, and just stay for another moment. We're not rushing to any poses. This wouldn't allow us to discover all the benefits. And then release that, step back. Down and facing dog. If you want to keep moving, there's always vinyasa that you can do in between, but don't rush. Part of the simplicity is also to slow down the rhythm a little bit so that we can we can tune in, we can stay present. If you're gonna rush through um, hurried sequence, you wouldn't have the same effect. Nice. You turn around so you see better. Step the left foot forward. Turn the right heel down. Warrior two pose. Set it up for a moment. For more intensity, walk the feet further apart. For less intensity, shorten the stance a bit. And it's going to become a bit more uh, accessible for tighter hips. Stretch the arms out. And take a moment. Reach the fingertips away from each other. Lunge into that front leg to the best of your ability. And then eagle pose, left elbow comes under the right this time. 
Squeeze the elbows together. Feel the stretch in the upper back, back of the heart, as the shoulder blades sliding apart. And keep pressing the forearms a little bit away from your face. Good, stretch the arms out. Warrior two. And then half bind, take the right hand around. Maybe it rests on the lower back, maybe inside the back of the pants, it's fine. Or you might find that the hip crease, it's all good. And then side angle pose with the front elbow on the front thigh. Roll that right shoulder back. You can look up as well, but I don't always find that really comfortable. So maybe just keep the head neutral if that feels better. Another moment or so, keep pulling the legs together energetically, even though they're not going anywhere, they're stuck on the mat. Then keep the half bind, but straighten the front leg and place the left hand somewhere where it's accessible. Lengthen both sides of the torso forward. If it's too much, lift up. If it's not enough, then well, then you have to go a little bit deeper, isn't it? Um, so it's up to you. But keep it simple, and the moment you find this is not simple anymore, it's difficult, your breath is laborious, you're starting to frown, you're starting to throw angry looks at your screen, at your yoga instructor, then you need to back off, you're going a bit too far. Nice, re-bend the front knee, reverse warrior lean back, stretch that whole side body on the left, and then half moon pose, step back if you need a bit of space, left fingertips push down, maybe use a block here under the hand, it feels really nice, lift the right leg, and then finally undo that bind, lift the right arm, stretch out in all directions, that's what half moon is about, or maybe a little back bend addition, you can hold the top foot, kick it back, just note that this is not necessary. It's just something you could explore. Release that. Downward facing dog, step back. And if you want to keep moving, do another vinyasa here. Or I'll happily go into child's pose for a few breaths. All right, I'll keep quiet for 15 minutes while we rest in child's pose till the end of our 60 minute class. No, not really, <laughs> but we'll take it easy from now on. You'll notice that none of these moves are complicated or fast or unachievable. Everyone can do them, but that doesn't mean they're easy. They in fact require quite a lot of effort and focus and presence and breath awareness and of course a level of strength and flexibility but there's always options for everyone if you if you are growing in that department keep in mind also we're never really flexible enough we're never strong enough so one day you're not going to wake up and say now I'm done, you know, with my training. It's more of a continuous process and you're in the right place. Slowly lift back up. Lift up onto your knees and let's do a camel pose. I'm tucking the toes under. And let's do a really mild version to start. We'll do three versions. And I'll increase the, the intensity, the range of motion a little bit as we move to the other ones. So don't go too far for the first one. First, we're keeping the hips a little bit forward so I can push with my hands so that the hips, they don't go really forward, but at least they stay above my hips. They definitely, definitely don't go back here. And then I'm lifting the chest here. Roll the shoulders back and then squeeze the elbows a little bit towards each other, 
behind the back. Open the throat. You don't need to throw your head back, you can still look a little bit forward, but just have a sense of openness in the whole front body. Good. Slowly release, sit back. If you can, sit back on the, on the heels with the toes tucked under. It's a nice way to stretch the connective tissue, the soles of the feet. And it's a simple resting pose. It becomes a resting pose if you do it more. If you're new to it, it might be a bit intense. And then lift up. Start of the same. Hands to the back of the hips. And now walk your hands a little bit up to, to hold the bottom of the rib cage, And then lift the whole thing up like you're trying to lift yourself up off the mat. Imagine it's a really good assist by your favorite yoga teacher. But actually it's yourself lifting yourself up. How amazing in these times of online yoga and home practice. Roll the shoulders back and maybe if you check with the hand your heel might be within your reach. If that's the case then you can have your hands on the heels. I like the inside of the heels and then to lift the chest up, expand the front body. Slowly release. If you can keep toes tucked under to sit back. Take a few breaths in this simple place. And then lift back up for our last version. If you know you have a bit more space to in your back bend, you can always untuck the toes so that the heels are a little bit lower. This will require you to reach a little bit further, of course. Or keep the, the heels up, do one of the two previous variations, no problem. We start off the same. I really like the self assist with the ribcage lift. And then maybe reach if your heels are within reach, then you can use them. Don't put a whole lot of weight on, but just use it more as a tactile support so to turn the arms out. And keep moving hips forward and the chest up. Three, two, one. Slowly release and sit down. Swing your legs out in front of you and bend the right knee. Open the right knee to the right. Keep the left leg straight. And then have your hands behind you, use this to lift the chest. If this is uncomfortable, this knee doesn't go all the way down, then just put something under it, a pillow, a book, or whatever you have ready at home, it's fine. And then if there's a bit more space, you can walk your hands forward over this front leg. But again, don't think if you reach your toes, now you have reached your destination. What kind of destination is this? I can touch my toes. That's not going to take you anywhere. Can you be the happiest forward folder, the kindest, the most joyful, the most present, the most relaxed? And not as in a competition with other people, but as in a comparison with how you used to be, maybe just a short while ago, maybe earlier this morning or yesterday. Can you be slightly more of these qualities, calm, present, joyful, compassionate? This is really the main prize that we're after in our yoga practice. Slowly lift back up and just place your right foot over the left knee. Keep the bottom leg straight. And then place or wrap the left elbow in front of that right knee. Lift the chest up, right hand goes behind you and turn to your right. A couple of breaths here, breathe into the rib cage, into your back. 
into your sides. And if you want, you can transfer that elbow outside your knee. Or just keep the arm wrapping around the knee. There's different options, of course. Really simple pose. Often we tuck that back leg, that front leg under. But try the simple variation. See if it teaches you something different. Not always having to choose the most complex option. It's actually really liberating. It means you can do a simple down dog for a minute. And that might be your home practice. Might be you do whichever pose you remember. A lunge, a squat, a down dog, a plank. And that could be a good home practice. You don't need a yoga teacher for, especially if you keep it simple. Counter twist, release. Stretch the right leg straight. Bend the left knee. Open the left knee to the left. Again, if you need to support this left knee, if it's a little bit lifted, then just put something under it so you can uh, relax down and lift the chest up the spine is long try to keep that feeling as best as you can as you walk a little bit forward and don't spend a single moment thinking you're too tight or you're there's something wrong with your body with your hamstrings or you're supposed to touch this or reach that or look like that it's not true it's just your mind coming up with whole bunch of stories. Your mind tries to keep things complex and our job is to simplify, to almost bypass a yes mind you want all kinds of stuff and you're eternally uh, dissatisfied. But I'm gonna do it like this, nice and simple. Tune into the breath now that the intensity of the poses has um, reduced quite a bit. It's a good time to soften, slow down. Slowly lift up and then take your left foot, place it over the right knee. Wrap the right arm in front of left knee and the left hand goes behind you. Lift the chest and the, the whole spine actually and turn to your left. And instead of asking how deep can I twist or what kind of pretzel can I twist myself in here, ask yourself how deep can the breath be? How present can I be with every inhale and exhale? How much can I enjoy the sensation of being in my body? And having worked, yeah, we've worked hard in very simple poses, isn't it? This is not an easy practice, but it was simple. And then place your right elbow over the left knee if you want to and use that to twist yourself in a little bit more. But again, ask yourself, what is that more? Is it a deeper twist that we want? Or is it something a bit more um, profound and long-lasting? Slowly release and then come to a comfortable seat i like to just rest down in the same pose that we started just for a few breaths almost an hour ago we started just like this maybe you just got up maybe you had a whole to-do list already this morning maybe you have a lot of stuff planned for the rest of the day or the week but Right now, let things be simple. This moment has nothing to do with your inbox or your to-do list. Notice the breath flowing in and out. Notice a sound outside, maybe a bird, another person, some traffic in the distance. Notice your body just resting here. And maybe even notice a 
peace of mind, just resting a little bit easier in the body after having moved in this way. It's always possible to sit still for a moment, to slow down, to watch the breath. And I find it even easier after having moved for a period of time in the way that we just have. And complicated and rushed, but quite strong, quite challenging in the end. Slowly. Come to lie down your back. We'll end with a very simple spinal twist. So here, just straighten your right leg out, bend the left knee into the chest, and then take the left knee over to the right side with your, you can use your right hand to do that. You can stretch left hand out to the opposite side, and then just rest down here. Don't try to twist more, or go further in any way. In fact, try to increase your relaxation. Just resting the body down as if this is already Shavasara. Release that side, straighten the left leg out. Bend the right knee and take the right knee over to the left. You can reach right arm out. Once you're in, as soon as you can, drop everything. Drop any resistance. Drop any striving. Just drop. And then slowly release. And then it's time for the, the most simple pose ever. It's just lying on your back with your arms and legs stretched out, flopping out to the sides. Wiggle around a few more times or a few more moments just to get really comfortable. To get it just right in a place that you can drop into with confidence that this earth will support you. Nothing is required of you. Let this be really simple. You don't need to balance. You don't need to strengthen, hold any tension. You don't need to be flexible. You can just let go, surrender more with every outbreath. If you have a bit more time, then by all means stay in the Shavasana for a couple more minutes, maybe five or ten minutes, it could be amazing. Even if you fall asleep, there's no problem, you're at home, you're comfortable, somebody will wake you up eventually.
Oh, if one hour was all that you had for your yoga practice, then move your legs, move your arms, maybe stretch overhead to yawn and reach and then bend your knees and roll over onto your sides. And when you're ready, come up into sitting. Place your palms together at the heart. And give thanks that your hands to your forehead, to your heart. And bow to yourself on the mat. Namaste everyone. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. It was a pleasure to um, feel your presence even through this uh, online medium. Thanks for the good work and I hope to see you again soon.